Good morning, New Hope. Welcome to Facebook Live. Welcome to social media, whatever platform you're viewing us from, YouTube, the internet, uh, wherever you're uh, viewing us from, your home, your workplace, your, your bedroom, your kitchen. Uh, wake up, get up, sit up, and listen up. This is the word of God. Praise be to God. The scripture says in the 138th Psalm, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. Give God some praise on this morning. Give God some Holy Ghost praise. And as we give God some praise this morning on this graduate today, I want to thank, first of all, I want to thank the media team, and I want to thank the, uh, the graduate uh, day uh, team for putting this all together. Uh, our media team, of course, is here every week and um, putting our media presentation together on Facebook Live and on our website and on YouTube and on Instagram and wherever you're viewing us from. And so I, I certainly want to give a shout out to them. And all those who are viewing us from outside of the community, outside of the state of Michigan, I want to say uh, thank you all for tuning in and um, to the Word of God here at New Hope Church. And to all of our graduates, I want to congratulate all of our graduates. I know uh, that um, you've been upended this year. I want to say congratulations to the class of 2020. Well, I should say to the class of 2020 uh, through the months of, say, March. I know everything was shut down in March, and so um, you, your, your, your total term was circumvented, was upended, and uh, graduation of sorts have been waived or modified or revised in some sort or maybe even uh, rescheduled or recast. But uh, no matter what the circumstances are, I just thank God that you made it uh, this far, and you've been successful, and um, you've been given your certification now for moving on to the next level. I'm going to ask that you turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6. And I'm going to start at uh, verse 33, and then I'm going to back up and read um, beginning at verse 25. So we're going to look at Matthew, uh, chapter 6, beginning at uh, verse 33. But I'm going to back up and read um, verse 25. But um, I want to first of all remind everybody again. I said in the announcements, I want to remind everybody again. On this coming Saturday, July the 4th, um, we're going to have a holiday drive-by. Holiday drive by. I want you to come by and greet Pastor, and I want to greet you, and uh, I want you to greet each other because our mission here at New Hope Church is connecting people to Jesus and to one another. So even in the midst of a shutdown, even in the midst of a slowdown, even in the midst of a quarantine, and in the midst of a lockdown, uh, we've not been meeting in church because um, it's, it's just too risky. Um, and, and the transmission, the viral transmission uh, is too high within the confines of a church when you're singing or talking and so forth like that. And so we're going to return back to church when it's safe. Um, I know a lot of you are wondering when we're going to come back to church. I know there might be some other churches already meeting, uh, but we're here at New Hope Church. I'm waiting for the Lord to tell us when to come back uh, in a safe environment. And when we come back, it's going to be a reduced environment. And uh, so we're going to continue doing what we've been doing virtually so that everybody can enjoy the worship that's put together for you every week and every Sunday. Uh, certainly, continuing your reading, um, your, your Bible reading through, uh, reading through the Bible in a year with pastor. And uh, you should be uh, coming up right up to ending in the Psalms. We should be right ending close to the end of the Psalms right about now. And uh, so join with pastor in reading through the Bible in a year. And uh, this coming Saturday, July the 4th, from 11 o'clock to 12 noon, from 11 o'clock to 12 noon, come by and wave at Pastor, greet Pastor, and drive by here at the church, and I want to wave and greet you, and I want to say I love you, and again, I want to thank, I want to thank Sister Daniels, for, Sister Lily Daniels, for teaching me how to say I love you uh, using sign language, using sign language, and this, I love you using sign language is like this, I love you, that's I love you in sign language, so thank you, Sister Daniels, and also I want to say happy birthday to Sister Daniels, she's 80 years old this week. Uh, Sister Lily Daniels, 80 years old this week, so happy, happy birthday, Sister Daniels, and all other, uh, all other June birthdays, and going into the month of July, uh, but all June birthdays, happy birthday, and I love you. So tell somebody right now, I love you, and you don't have to say it by speaking, but just sign it to them. In a time like this, the less you speak, maybe that might be the best. If you don't say anything, you know, the less words you say, that might be the best, so I love you. Get it? Got it? Good. God bless you. And also, I want to be prayerful for uh, Dan and Wendy Cahill. Um, Dan's brother died this past week, and uh, we want to send out our prayers for Dan and Wendy Cahill. Let us pray. Holy God, now, Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your written word and for your spoken word, and now may we know your living word. In the name of Christ the Lord, we pray. Amen. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, and I'm going to start reading at verse 33 and 34, and then I'm going to back up to verse 25. 
but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, verse 34 says, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Now, let me give you a little commentary here. Whenever you read the word but, there's something that comes before it. Whenever you read the word but, there's something that comes before it. So verse 33 started with but. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to back up and read verse 25, beginning at verse 25, because this is the passage that comes before, of course, verse 33. Beginning at verse 25, it says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. Do not worry about what you'll eat or drink or about your body, what you'll wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Verse 31 goes on to say, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all those things, and your heavenly Father knows you need them. And then verse 33 goes into, it says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these other things will be given you as well. I want to talk about this morning I want to talk about this morning, God's path. I want to say again, congratulations. I was, I was wearing my, um, my academic regalia today uh, in honor of all of our graduates. And uh, I know all of our graduates, you've, been, you, you've worn yours if you had a modified graduation of any sort. You've worn your academic regalia as well uh, with my robe, with my vestment, um, with my doctor bars, and, uh, and my TAM representing uh, graduation as well too. So I'm gonna take this off. But I want to say to all of our graduates, congratulations again. I want to talk about this morning, God's path. God's path. As a graduate of promotion from one grade to another, you're making progress in life, achieving a goal, protesting for reform throughout the country or locally, or fighting for justice and equity where you are in your community. You are merely turning the page in your life that ends one chapter and begins another chapter. And this is an exciting time for all of us. It's an exciting time, but at the same time, it's an unprecedented period. Think about it like this. The actual graduation ceremony, of which we call, uh, of which for many of you was canceled, uh, is called commencement. The actual graduation ceremony is called commencement. When something commences, that means it starts. Commences means to start. And, and that's what's happening for graduates and many of you today involved in the movement. But don't worry. I, 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 know, I know it wasn't a traditional ending for you, but don't worry. Because many of us have been where you are. And we trusted God. And God worked it out. And that's essentially what I want to say to you today. No matter how unusual, no matter how untypical, no matter how abnormal, no matter if you had to start or, or rather stop and march and, and start up again in a virtual format and, and it was difficult. Matter of fact, not only was it difficult for you as students, but it was difficult for professors and for teachers as well and for staff and for the whole educational system. But no matter how, no matter how you've come to this point, thanks be to God that you got here. Today, we're celebrating here at New Hope Church. We're celebrating this as Graduates Day, and God has brought you safe thus far. And uh, many of us have been through some tough times and some rough times and and some bumpy roads and some curvy uh, journeys. But yet, God brought us here, and guess what? God worked it out for us, and he'll work it out for you as well. The key is God. The key is God. You need to realize that if if you're going to make it day by day, it's God that woke you up. It's God that opened your eyes. It's God that gave uh, warm running blood in your body. It's God that allows you to shake your hands. It's God that allows you to get down on your knees. It's God that allows you to get started on another day. It's God that allows you to make it through the day. And so the key is God. Give thanks to God. I will praise God with my whole heart with my whole heart. And it's important to make sure that you put first things first. Put God first. If you're going to make it in this life, put God first. Seek ye first his kingdom and God 
will give you everything else you need. And when, when the Bible says seek first his kingdom, it means that you ought to turn to God first for help. Fill your thoughts with God's desires. Fill your thoughts with God's actions and with God's character. Make sure that you get God first. If, 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 if you want to be successful, you need to know that God is good and everything God does is good. When God created you, when God made you, God made you good. Because that's what my Bible says. In Genesis, the second chapter, he says, everything he made, he was pleased. God is pleased with you today. There's a story about a southern preacher who shared the old recipe for, for rabbit stew. He shared this old recipe for rabbit stew, and, and he started out the recipe uh, with this instruction. He says, if you want rabbit stew, first catch the rabbit. Well, yeah, I guess if you want rabbit stew, you had better get the rabbit first. And that's with life. If you want to be successful, make this part of, of your recipe for life's success. Look at Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 says if you focus on this word if you concentrate on this word if you study this word and put it in your heart God will give you um, uh, success and he'll give you prosperity but you got to be courageous enough to pick it up every day and, and recognize that what God's recipe for your life is is right here in the Bible it's in God's word matter of fact somebody told me a long time ago Bible means uh, basic instructions before living before leaving earth b-i-b-l-e basic instructions before leaving earth that's what god's word is so putting first things first always involves prioritizing and be careful because uh, people and objects and and goals and other desires compete for priority you don't want to put anything before god these things can bump god from first place if we're not cautious as students and life learners you you you've been rated proficient in what you've done in your previous studies and your activism and now you're beginning a new day now you're beginning a new chapter and presently you're making some choices as to what you're going to do next some of you're going to choose college that's a good choice some of you're going to choose great uh, a trade uh, or go to trade school that's a good choice some of you're going to choose military service that's a good choice but it comes with some risk some of you are going to choose marriage. Hmm, think about who you choose for marriage. <laughs> While others will choose to begin your careers. In other words, this is the kind, you, you come to a place what we call a fork in the road. And someone said, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. And ultimately, on your journey, and at your fork in the road, there are no wrong choices. Because even if you discover that one path is not the right path for you, you end up with a net benefit of two lessons. When you take that fork, no matter which way you go, no matter which way you go, you discover that if you discover that one path is not the right one for you, then you have, you, you, you've learned two lessons automatically. First of all, the first lesson you learn is that the only way out of something is through something. The only way out of something is through something. The second lesson is this, trust the process. Now, I want to talk about God's path, God's path, how to stay on it and where it might lead you. Specifically, I want to talk about your path that you should walk with God and how you should seek out God's direction, how you ought to seek out God's direction. When you seek first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness in order of priority, first of all, you need to know that your steps are ordered. Your steps are ordered. Have you heard the quote, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step? And so you ask, well, what does that actually mean, Pastor? Well, it means that in life, there are lots of steps. In your life, in my life, in your mom's life, in your spouse's life, there are lots of steps. High school, college, or graduate school are big steps that you've just completed. But that's all it is. It's a step in your life. The next step may be college. It may be going out to work. It may be going into the military or trade. It may be getting married. But the next step for you, whatever that may be, it comes after the last step that you made. And make sure that every step you make counts for something. Our steps have to be ordered. Just like you order from a menu in a restaurant, your steps have to be ordered. In the same way, God orders our steps and, and steps that we're able to take. God orders steps that we're able to take. 
The, 30, the 37th division of Psalm, Psalm 37, 23, the scripture says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God orders your steps. And he delights in his way. So if, if God has ordered your steps, then be obedient and follow God's ordered steps for your life. If you want a God-ordered life, you need to begin with the very step, the very first step. And the very first step is God. God not only directs our steps, but he also determines our steps. He, he orders our steps. He ordains our steps. And this includes our going out and our coming in. This includes our lying down and our getting up. This includes our walking and our sleeping. This includes our buying and our selling. This includes our talking and our listening. This includes our walking and our driving. And because he is God, there are no accidents with God. Nothing ever happens to a child of God by luck. Nothing ever happens to a child of God by chance. Nothing ever happens to, to a child of God, you or me. It doesn't happen to us by faith. God orders our steps. No circumstance, whether good or bad, can come to us apart from God's determined purpose and will for our lives. I'm glad, I'm glad God has brought me to where I am today because I know I've not, I've not done everything that I should have done and I've not said everything that I should have said, but thanks be unto God, I made God a first priority in my life and now God has ordered my steps and I'm happy. Again, seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things. Matter of fact, I can't even imagine all that God still has in store for me because God has ordered my steps. And so God has a reservoir of blessings waiting for me. All I got to do is do God's will and do God's work, and God's got, God's got a big payoff for me, and he got a big payoff for you. Secondly, your paths are directed. Your paths are directed. Proverbs, the third chapter, verses 5 and 6, the scripture says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God, and he shall direct your paths. Now, the key to unlocking God's direction is by acknowledging God in all your ways. Before you get up in the morning, acknowledge God. Going through the day, acknowledge God. Before you go to bed at night, acknowledge God. When you're in the grocery store, acknowledge God. When you're in the restaurant, acknowledge God. Don't be afraid to acknowledge God. Don't be afraid when you're in the restaurant to bow your head and pray in front of everybody else. Don't be afraid to allow somebody to call you a holy roller because you are a holy roller. You are a saint of God. You are a child of God. You are a follower of the way. Don't be afraid to acknowledge God each and every day. And God will add to your blessings. Activities don't direct your paths. Your fraternal and sorority memberships don't direct your paths. Wealth does not direct your path. Your church membership or affiliation does not direct your path. Your degrees or your careers or other folks or your boyfriend, your, your girlfriends or your, your wife, your, 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 your husband or your children, they don't direct your paths. God directs your paths. And if we let God direct our feet to, to walk our path, then we will be taken care of. God's got this. As we go through this pandemic, God's got this. As we, as we protest and march and fight for dignity and respect and civil rights and honor, God's got this. All we got to do is stand up and say, God, I, I need you, Lord. I need you right now. Lord, I need you to be my mainstay. Lord, I need you to be my caretaker. Lord, I need your compassion. Lord, I need your blessings. Lord, I need you each and every day. God's got you. You just got to make sure that you acknowledge God. Many of us had, had some season in our lives when our existence was lonely. Our existence was painful or uncertain. Don't forget about God when you're off on your own. Don't forget how God has taken care of you so far. If you trust in God, God's going to take care of you. You do God's work, and God's going to do his work in you. Romans chapter 8, you know the, the scripture, Romans chapter 8 and 28. For we know that all things work together for good. Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry, that's, that's not entirely all true there. If, if we look at this verse very carefully and we see the parts that we sometimes glaze over, you can't glaze over. You, when you read the scripture, you've got to read all the scripture. Um, you can't, you, let's look at the part that we glaze over. We know that for those who love the Lord, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. So as I close, I'm going to offer you four ways very quickly. <clears throat> four ways that you can find and stay on God's path. Four ways that you can find and stay on God's path. The first way is follow God's instructions. Follow God's word, every bit of it. 
We follow God's instruction in everything else in life, yet sometimes we put God on the back burner. Know God's word, read God's word, study God's word, just as you would your, your, your engineering class or your history class, your, your, your educational classes, because there will, be, there will be a test on it later on, and you need to be prepared. So follow God's instructions, follow the instructions. Secondly, seek the narrow path in your life. You are not the first person to have struggled with something. You're not the first person to have struggled with sex or drugs or alcohol or any other various temptations that, um, uh, and the things that will seek to take you away from God's path. Stick with those who are struggling with the same things you're struggling with. Uh, seek out fellow Christians. Seek out churches nearby. Uh, no one has promised that the Christian life is going to be an easy life. And that's especially true in the years to come when you really find out who you are and what you're going to do with your life. So ask yourself the question that stems from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7. Will your path be made wide and easy and lead away from God? Or will your path be narrow and difficult and lead you directly to God? Thirdly, don't seek wide ways. Don't seek wide ways or strange gods. Don't seek wide ways or strange gods. Idols can come in many forms. Sometimes you can make yourself your idol. You finally gotten away from your parents and you now choose to do what you probably couldn't do at home. Or maybe your idol has been your work. Maybe your idol has been social media. Maybe your idol has been money. Maybe your idol has been your boyfriend, your girlfriend. Whatever form that idol takes, it prevents you from following God in any way. And it should not be part of your path in life. And lastly, but not least, always plan with God in mind. Always plan with God in mind. When I started college, I studied gr and, and graduated from Morehouse and Georgia Tech and uh, engineering, and, um, and, 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 and I planned to provide for my family as an engineer, now as a pastor. I didn't plan on being a pastor, but my life did not turn out as I thought it would, but it turned out exactly as God thought it would. Let me tell you, let, let me close with the scripture, Jeremiah 29 and 11, and you know it. It says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. So, God knows your plans. God knows the plans he has for you. And I want to thank all the young people who have participated with us, all the adults that participated with us in Graduate Day, but God knows your plans. Brittany, God knows your plans. Brandon, God knows your plans. Uh, uh, Donovan, God knows your plans. Madison, God knows your plans. Uh, Gene Geneva, God knows your plans. He says, I know the plans I have for you. Each graduate, each student, each parent, each spouse, each family, each friend, each Christian, each person that has not made Jesus the director of your life, God wants you to have a better life today. And so if you're not made Jesus your savior, your director, your Lord, then I'm inviting you today to don't, 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 don't waddle in sadness. Don't waddle in pity. Stop having a pity party. Stop saying, when I get myself together, no, you get up right now wherever you are and let God get you together because God wants you to have a better life. I invite you right now to seek Jesus. Seek Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life because God so loves you that he gave his son Jesus that whoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you want a prosperous life, if you want a good life, it's not going to be all easy, but you can make it with the Lord on your side. A better life. Watch this video segment from Coach Carter that's played by Samuel Jackson about the study, the suffering, the disciplines uh, brought upon you as an effort for you to rise above the trials and the turmoils of life and achieve victory and salvation. You got to rise up and seek God. He sits high. He looks low. He cares for you. He has compassion for you. He loves you. And so do I. God bless you. I love you. You think it came through all right, Brother Carl Pepper?